How's it going everybody? Today we're going to go over a very basic lighting and shader setup that I use sometimes for turntables and kind of model displays. It's a very very basic setup and I, I tend to tell modelers all the time you don't really need to dive into this, uh, this type of work. I'm not, a, I'm not a lighter, I'm not a renderer, I don't have time to sit there and crunch numbers and wait for these massive render times, especially when I'm at home and I'm on a machine that might not be as beefy as something I'm using at work. But uh, a lot of people have written in to me on occasion and asked, you know, like, how can we display our models? Now, I do a lot of ZBrushing, so I cheat, and I usually just do screenshots. It, it has a pretty decent display uh, viewport of your models with some kind of cheap, cheat, uh, ambient occlusion type looks and stuff, which is kind of what most people are wanting to get out of something like Mental Ray. But Mental Ray can be pretty intimidating, and there's a lot going on, and it's hard to learn and um, stuff like that. But if you just use it simply, uh, with a very basic setup, and I'll just show you really quick. I mean, this entire, not that this thing's amazing looking, but this entire thing is literally using one node. <laughs> it's using a fong, as you can see here, and I'm using a ambient occlusion node. And that's it. I'm not doing anything else. I don't have some crazy setup, um, which is good, but I'm getting a pretty decent display. I mean, all I really want out of a model turn is something that displays my model properly, probably some generic ambient occlusion and a decent uh, spotlight so that we can just kind of create some contrast between lights and darks. So we're going to focus on this. Let me just hide this really quick. And I'll show you my basic setup. Let me just kind of move this out of the way. The first thing that we want to do, I'm just to, so we can start fresh, I'm going to go, let's apply Lambert onto this. Actually, let me change this to my other viewport. There we go. So the first thing we want to do, this is our very generic scene. Let's just pretend we had just finished modeling this. Now we need to establish a shader, okay? So when you open up your, your Maya nodes, you want to make sure that you have Maya selected. Not mental ray, not materials, not anything else. Up here in the upper left, you'll notice it says Maya. We want to select that. That's going to give us an option to use any of these Maya nodes. So I want to use Blend, Lambert, Fong, Fong E, something like that. And you can go ahead and try and use something that matches the material that you're using. I like using a little bit of shine, but not something that's going to bounce light really, really hard. Uh, in this case, let's just use Fong E. So I'm going to press that. That's going to drop this node down here for us. And let's just apply this to our scene. It pretty much looks the same in the viewport. Not much has happened. But now let's, just so we can see what we're dealing with at this point. Um, I'm going to create a light first before we render. Right now I have a very generic light and I'll show you how we get that. I'm going to go up here top left and say create lights directional light. And here is a directional light. Directional lights work pretty good. Uh, the difference between a directional light and a spotlight is basically that it doesn't cone out. It just comes from all everywhere from the direction that it's pointing. Um, I'll show you my basic settings that I have for this. I try and use Anytime I do a render, I, a hot side and a cool side, I just think it adds more contrast to your model. So if you want to look at the values I have for this light, I'm going to go Control A. And it's very basic. I definitely, definitely want to turn Ray Trace Shadows on, which is right here, under Use Ray Trace Shadows. And that is almost it. The only other slight adjustment I usually make is under Shadow Color. I always shift it towards blue because shadows in the real world are not black, they're actually blue or some shade of blue usually. And then uh, I just pull it away from solid black. I don't, I don't think shadows should be 100% black, they just they don't look that way in the real world so I don't try to mimic it that way. And now with just having the Fong E and the light, let's just do a quick render because if you're going to do rendering you kind of want to know where you're at right away. I'm going to open up my render settings here. The first thing you want to do is you're probably going to be on render using Maya software. You want to drop this down to Mental Ray. If you do not see Mental Ray in your drop down, Window, Settings and Preferences, Plugin Manager. And you're going to open that up. And you should look for, right here it says Maya2MR.MLL. Make sure you press Loaded or Auto Load. Actually, both of them. And then close that. 
And then if you do that, you'll notice you'll get an additional mental ray option here. So let's press mental ray. Now the first thing I always tell people is don't sit there and waste a bunch of time like on your little quick horrible uh, test renders and stuff. Just move on with your life, you know what I mean? Immediately I'm going to go to draft for my quality preset. Once we're done, we'll go to production, which will be much higher settings and of course much higher render time. Now I'm going to go to the common tab and just make sure I'm, I don't need to render a gigantic Blu-ray size test, so I'm just going to make this like 600 by 360. And we can close that. Now, without doing anything, I'm just going to press the render tab. And this is what we get. A whole lot of crap that no one wants. I got reflections in there I don't want. I got jagged edges. It's not that cute. There's no ambient occlusion. But we can fix all that pretty easily. So I'm going to select this node and press Control A. That will give me my options. You can also double click on it. I'm going to get rid of reflectivity. I'm going to get rid of wetness. Unless you want that on there, you can have it. I'll probably turn this spec down just a bit. And now just the only difference we're going to get, just really quick to show you, is we're going to lose the reflections and stuff, which is already looks better because we don't really want that. At least not for this anyway. Now let's add some ambient occlusion to this. Let's make this light a little brighter. I'm going to make it one right now. So now really what everyone wants is some, some kind of ambient occlusion, right? So instead of selecting Maya in the upper left here, where we have all these shader nodes, you'll notice right here it says Mental Ray. And now under there there's a subcategory of Textures. And I'm going to press that. That's going to give me all the Mental Ray texture options. And I want the MIB AMB occlusion, which is just Mental Ray Ambient Occlusion. I'm going to press that. It's going to drop it into my work area. Now for this I just want to, I believe it's middle drag, I'm using a pen so it's a bit different. Uh, I'm just going to middle drag from this onto this Fong E node and release. And now don't say default, we don't want to hook it up to default, we want to hook it up to ambient color. Basically what I'm telling Maya is I want to render the ambient color of my scene as ambient occlusion. And now when I press render again, ah, now we have something that we can work with. You'll notice the quality is very low, but we had a one second render time. So this is actually what I want. And I'll show you really quick how to just increase, increase your quality a bit. Let me zoom in and do one more render really quick. Now for most people, we're actually already there. This is all people want. Let's do one more really quick so we can see the whole thing. There we go. This is really all that most people want. And it's a simple one node, one shader setup very easy to use, very fast, and you can see I can get renders in one second um, and quickly kind of test out the waters and see the shot that I want before going to full production render quality. Uh, the two things that you want to adjust, if you double click this node, you'll notice that the default samples for this are 16. Now if I do 256 and I press render, our render time is going to go up for sure, but we're going to get a much nicer render. And it actually looks pretty good at 256. Now the jagged edges we're getting are because of our production setting. So we can go back here to our render settings. And under quality, let's just go to production. And now the only other thing I ever really adjust, and you don't even have to, uh, sometimes I'll change under um, filter. Its default is Gauss. Um, sometimes I'll change it to Mitchell. Um, it just gives me a crisper edge, so sometimes if you have textures on something, it, it'll, it'll definitely display your textures better, like quite a bit, by magnitude of 5 or 10. It, it does a much better job. So let's uh, render that one more time. Now our render time is going up even further, but we're going to get a pretty nice result, and you'll notice we, we no longer have the anti-aliasing around the objects in the scene, which is really good. And already, without doing anything else, we're at a pretty good, pretty good finished quality kind of render. I like that I've got a hot spot on the left, a cool side on the right. We have some basic ambient occlusion going on. And then moving forward from this, I'll just show you a couple of things, kind of philosophies that I have uh, um, to get your render to look nice. So this is, actually, this is perfectly adequate for just about anybody. If you open up the configuration of this, I, I just want you to see what what this gets you. Let me put this back to, um, let's make it 64 so we can do some quick tests here. 
and then I'm going to move my quality to preview instead of production. So really what's going on here is I'm saying I want my ambient occlusion at its darkest point to be solid dark. I want its brightest point to be solid white. So if I slide this down and then we hit render, you notice the scene's not going to be as bright anymore. I'm turning the overall ambient light down, so now it's much more gray. If I turn it back up and we press render, we're going to get a much more white scene. And it's worth it to play around with these settings because we don't want pitch black shadows. And so, because of that, I don't, I'm going to tell my ambient occlusion not to be pitch black. I'm going to tell it to be blue, and I'm going to tell it to kind of move off of solid, solid black, just so we have a little bit of color in our shadows and our ambient light overall. And these are very subtle things, but you notice we're getting a much brighter scene. We're probably going to get much more accurate looking shadows as well. And once you combine this with the fact that your ray trace light, which you can add color to as well, its shadow should also not be 100% dark. I see let's lighten this up a bit as well. And these are all just very subtle changes. But now you can start getting some interesting looks. And that's a pretty good quality render right there. And we're still in preview mode, don't forget. So now if we wanted to do a final render of this, you'll notice too you can get some interesting color combinations and stuff. Because my fong has a color, you know, I can change this. I can make this object you know, orange or red or something. Let's just do this really quick. So you can start getting some interesting looks because if I, if I make my scene this more like a clay, which actually looks really cool, but then I make my ambient light maybe kind of red, you can start getting some pretty interesting looking, uh, maybe fake subsurface looks. So if I want my bright to be, you know, maybe have some red in it. This is probably going to be really exaggerated and not what I want, but you notice it does have an impact on the scene quite a bit, actually. And then uh, for my dark, let's definitely shift that way closer to blue and do one more test. There we go. Now we're getting a pretty interesting look. You'll notice that we're getting some reds, we're getting some oranges, and the shadows are, uh, are blue which actually looks really nice. And it's subtle, it's not overwhelming or anything. Let me just make one more small adjustment. And there we go. Not too bad. Just some food for thought. I don't typically go above um, 512 on this and probably really 256 for what we're doing right now is perfectly okay. So let's just do this really quick. We're going to change this to production. And we'll make this 1200. We'll actually do a large scale render this time. And through the magic of editing, it'll be done instantaneously. So this is a pretty nice setup for me anyway. Uh, it works pretty good. I mean, if you're rendering guns, vehicles, things like that, this is pretty excellent. And voila! So this render uh, at 1200, I have a very big monitor, I have a 27 inch Apple Cinema display, so this might be a little bit, you might think this isn't a very big render, but this is actually 1200 pixels across, so this is a pretty big render. Comes out really nice looking. We're getting all the detail we want, we've got a nice hot spot, light spot, um, and some good ambient occlusion. So I am happy with this. And that is it. If you have any further questions, Feel free to give me a buzz. Oh, before I go, really quick. Uh, if you want to do an interior, you do have to change your max distance. This number has to be something other than zero, anything other than zero. Um, if you're not getting the results that you want for some reason, you can play with your spread. I don't really recommend it. I very rarely have the default 0 .800 not give me a pleasant result. But adjusting that number to be higher will actually tighten your ambient occlusion up. So if you need to focus something on like really tiny cracks, that might be something you want to do, but I don't usually touch that very much. If you are doing an interior, you have to adjust this. If this is zero, you'll actually just render a pitch black scene. So if you're inside of a room, you need to make your max distance anything other than zero. Just start playing around with it. Uh, I would start with like 10. Don't go shooting it through the roof or anything, but start with 10, maybe five, and that should get you a pretty good result. 
So there you go. Super simple, one node. We don't need to go bananas with 900 things. This is the easy jazz shit up. Thanks, everybody.